Hi, this is Sean, and in this lesson we're going to learn the Barry Harris dominant scale rules for improvisation. We'll figure out what they are, of course, how to use them, plenty of examples, and what to go away and practice. Please do give this video a like, it really helps to push it out on YouTube, and if it's your first time here, please do hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when I upload new content. And with that, I'm ready to begin. So first of all, what are they? Well, the scale rules for dominant are built on dominant scales. So a dominant scale, C7, is the major scale with a flat 7. And other people will have different names for Barry. That's a dominant scale or the C7 scale. The scale rules will be most useful when we're descending the scale. We'll see why. So why use them? Although he didn't explain it this way, what happens is, let's say when you ascend the scale first of all, if we hold down all the notes that fall on the beat, we'll get a C7 and we'll keep getting notes that figure out pretty well, you know, from the C7 notes. Now, when you descend from C, you'll get all the, for want of a better phrase, wrong notes, right? So, what? of course they're not wrong to play, but we want to make them figure out well. Now, what Barry would do is insert an extra note to make them figure out correctly. It can be done in a few ways, which we will see. So when and where to add them? Well, the place he taught mostly was between the root and the seventh. So the B natural in this case is the note between root and seventh, because once we put that in, then everything figures out again rhythmically. Because rhythmically we have one and two and three and four and one. And if we look at what's on the beat now, one, two, three, four, one. So that extra note works really well when you are descending from either one, three, five, or seven, any of the chord notes of C7. Let's see why. If we put it in, and let's think about the time. This is one thing that students often don't do when they're first learning to improvise. They're not thinking time and it's all about time. So one and two and three and four and one. All the C7 notes fell on the beat. Now from the two, we don't need that. One and two and three and four and one. See the same notes, we arrived at the same place at the same time because the same notes, after we cross the octave line of C, See, all the C7 notes fell on the beat, okay? Now, mathematically, you'll need it, as I said, on 1, 3, 5, and 7, and not on the others, not on 2, 4, and 6. So, on 3, we will need it. 1 and 2, extra note, 3 and 4 and 1. 2, 3, not from 4. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1. See, the C7 notes are coming out on the beat again. From five, we will need it. One and two and three, extra note, four and one. We're coming out on good notes, in inverted commas, good notes, okay? Uh, from six, we don't have to have it. One and two and three and four and one. From seven, we will, but let's see. One and two and three and four and one. And then of course we're back where we were. Okay, so that's the basics of the dominant scale rules, where to insert the extra note. So as I said, mainly used on the way down. And let's put these in some phrase examples so we can see how we would do it. Well, the kind of thing you can do, simple. Build any scale patterns. Ideally, you find your own ways to do it so you can become an improviser and train yourself to compose on the spot, which is really what improvisation is. It's not making it up as you go along, it's composing in real time for me. So up and down with scale rules, what do I mean? I'm going to pick any point in the scale. Let's pick, and I'm going to start on the root, let's pick five. So I'm going to go from the root to the fifth. See what happened, because one and two and three this came on the beat for the beginning of the descend. So I'm going to take my extra note or not extra note rule from here. This is a chord note of C7, so it needs an extra note. One and two and three and four and one and two. That would be perfect on just a C7. 
Now, have patience. Bear with me, because normally when we're building phrases from nothing, they'll sound like nothing to begin with until we start to mess with them, put them over chord progressions. So, for example, just that one phrase, that can fit over G minor 7 to C7, not just C7, a 2-5 progression in the key of F. 1, 2, G minor 7, 3, 4, 5, C7. So... Fine, cut off the first note. One, two, three, four, one. You see what I mean? Of course, you can extend them. You can do what you want with them after that. Okay, this time I'll run from one to four. But it's not just about saying I'm on a four, so I don't need an extra note because I need extra notes from one, three, five, and seven. It's also about which beat we are on at the time because one and two and three that's the note that fell on the beat okay so that's the note i'll take the scale rule from when we went up to the fifth one and two and three i could take the note the scale rule from there because that was on the beat okay so from the four let's see one and two and three and four extra note you see so that is a yes for an extra note. So always listen to what comes on the beat. After a while, at the beginning, it may feel like an intellectual exercise. After a while, it'll start to feel more intuitive and you'll be able to hear this several steps in advance. OK, let's do one more like that. Let's take the just the two. Did add because one and two, the, the first note, the root note was on the beat. One and two and three and four and one. So now we're getting to add extra notes relatively fluently whenever we go up and down by feeling what comes on the beat. Next up, let's try intervals then down. So for example, interval third, one and three, four, fifth, sixth. If I take the fourth, one and two, Again, this E is the note on the beat. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. Very simple, okay? Again, you can cut the first note and swing more. One, two, three and four and one. And two and three and four and one. So the rules ha actually have to change if that fourth beat is on an off beat, right? Because the third will be on the beat. So we're taking it from whatever falls on the beat. A good rule of thumb here is if it's off the beat, the rules have to reverse, you know? So if it's on the beat, one and two and three, no extra note. If it's off the beat, one and two and three and four, the B was the extra note. Okay, that's something to bear in mind for the future. I don't want to give you too much here. Okay, let's take another interval. Now, the intervals don't have to start on the root. They could start from anywhere in the scale. So let's pick number two and let's play a third, two up to four. That interval jump. One and and two. So again, we'll take the rule from the E because that's what falls on the beat. Pretty simple, right? So let's take a longer interval this time. We'll go from the E to the B flat. We'll make that jump. So the B flat is a place where we normally would add, but it's off the beat. One and two. The A is on the beat, which means we don't have to add anything extra. One and two and three and four and one and two, three, four. So let's pick. If we would have run from E to A, we would add because the G will end up on the beat. One and two and three and four and one and two. Let's try that. Three, four. One and two and three and four and one and two. So those are the basics of getting the scale under your fingers. This time, let's look at chords joined to scales. So we could take full chords in the C7 scale, which I showed you at the beginning. If we take it in four note chords, arpeggiated like that, these would be considered chords up in the scale, okay?
and then back home. So if we pick one of them, let's say, why not this one? And then down, the rule will come from here, whether we add or not. Why? Because one and two and three, that's a note on the beat. So we'll see how that works on a few of these chords. Here we go. That first one that I just showed you. Three, four, one and two and three and four. Extra note. One and two and three. What did I take there? A diminished because those work well on the C7. I've got a whole lesson on that. I'll link below. But you can practice extending these in various ways. So if you like that phrase, find ways to improvise out of it. I really like having something fixed and something improvised. So for example, I might do stuff like this. The one I just showed you. Now I'll do it in a few different ways. Up the first note. Some chromatic stuff at the end. was that? That was chord up, extra note, Barry Harris, another chord up and down the scale that takes us to an F major because this is 2-5 to F major. If you cut the first note, one, two, three, four, one. Fine. Let's extend it a different way. Some improv on a different scale. <laughs> For those more advanced, this is D flat melodic minor over C7. If that's all new to you, don't worry about it at this stage. Okay, let's see one more chord in the scale. Let's take one that may not feel that natural. Let's take this. May not feel like it has much to do with a C7. Let's see what we can do with it. So this is, see, it doesn't matter if everything doesn't feel like C7. It's how you come out of these things makes the most difference. So up. Here's the note that fell on the beat. One and two and three and four and one. Now, because four fell on the beat, the F, we don't have to add. No B natural. When I come to E, let's go up a chord could be a chord in the C7 scale or it could be this diminished that I showed you earlier okay so instead of cutting a note this time I'm going to add a note at the beginning I'll add a half step one two three four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one Okay, so that's how you join chords and scales. This is infinite, really. The only thing that can limit you is, is what you can imagine. Of course, you don't have to put the chords at the beginning. They could be anywhere in the phrase. So, for example, if I take, let's descend the C7 scale from G. One and two and three and four. Upper, upper chord. Some chromatics at the end. Let me do that again. Chromatics there. That's a chromatic major. I teach those as well. I'll link those below. Now, what newer players will struggle with is where does the chord change? That's what you've got to feel if you're new to improv. You've got to feel one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. And that's part of the practice. People often think they're just practicing phrases, but really you're practicing. Can you keep the chords in time where they really live whilst improvising over the top, whilst having something fixed and something improvised? Can you feel where the extra note goes in this case? Barry also used to say that that extra note does not need to go between one and seven. It can go in several places. For example, it could go between six and five. Fine. It could go between two and one. That was just C7 to F instead of G minor seven, C7 to F. It doesn't matter about the chords. Okay. 
Of course, there is always further study on these things. We teach the extended scale rules on jazz skills. That's when you can have three extras or two extras, depending on which note. And there are various different applications. They don't just apply to dominant chords. They can apply to all sorts of different situations as well. So they're really worth learning. OK, hope you enjoyed that. Hope you got something out of it. And if you did, perhaps you'll consider joining us on Jazz Skills, where we've got hundreds of lessons on improvisation, on chord movement, for people just getting into jazz, the developing fluency course to get you fluent with knowing the language and the progressions of jazz as well. Individual help from me, members webinars and all kinds of other good stuff too. Thanks a lot for watching. See you on the next one. Bye for now.